Money World El mundo quiere dinero Money World Se arregla con dinero Money World Si me quiero educar eh, Dormir en algún lugar Un lugar para trabajar eh, Y si no hay para emigrar todo money, money, todo el dinero Solo un par de gente se lleva el putín entero Funny, funny, pasa verdadero Si tienen la verde siempre llegará primero Pero llegaremos antes o después Solo a lo suyo, que Dios te lo ve Que por más que tarde lo veré caer Somos malos buenos y tenemos que ver el dinero Ya lo veré, yo vendo mi alma, lo lograré Seré el más grande, no olvidaré De dónde vengo ni cómo voy Money world Money world. Yo digo las cosas como son, no sí. quiero ninguna, ninguna aceptación Tampoco vengo a pedir perdón, porque mis sentimientos se volvieron la canción yeah. No me vale mucho como tú me ves, sabes tú me llegas solo a los pies Para mí ser grande es un interés, ser un buen humano para mí es un deber El dinero ya lo veré, no vendo mi alma, lo lograré Seré el más grande, no olvidaré de dónde vengo ni cómo voy Money world. Money work. De corazón, de corazón La plata no te hace ser feliz yeah, yeah, De corazón, de corazón yeah, yeah. La plata no te hace ser feliz Money work. El mundo quiere dinero Lunático
nothing can stop me Cause I'm addicted to what you and I
addicted to what you and I realize. How you doing, girl? Bobbity Bob, we are back. We are back. Shout out to the CIA. <clears throat> One love to the feminine, beautiful, inspirational ladies in the house. The FBI, how we doing, everybody? Let's get the sound going. Testing, testing. One, two, testing. One, two. That's what we're doing. All right, your godfather's back in the house, and the house is definitely packed. Let's get on into it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Healing together with Dr. Kevin Samuels. <laughs> you like that shit, don't you? You ain't no doctor. Who is this dude think he is trying to help men become the best version of themselves and got the nerve to be trying to be out here and network and be successful and build bridges with people of understanding? You're supposed to stay over here in the He-Man Woman Haters Club. And just ring your finger. We ain't doing it. Shut up. Shut the French toast up. It is what it is. And until you can do better, I'm what you got. You want to talk? You can tell I'm until you can do better. I'm what you got. Don't talk about it. Be be it. Be about it. All right. Let's get the likes up, people. I think it was an interesting video. I think, it was, I think it's going to be interesting times around here because relationships are front and center. Relationships are front and center. Why? Because um, what a lot of people who have means and, and connections don't understand is when they leave their place of employment, they have lives to go to. Most people don't. Most people don't have lives to go to in particular, the ladies. Modern women really don't have lives to go to. If you were on my Instagram last night, I uploaded a video talking about um, an ex a stripper. And she said it, I'm a stripper. I'm not calling her a stripper. She called herself a stripper. Stripper, a 36-year-old stripper who wants to be a luxury housewife and don't want to lift a finger. What's so crazy about that is because um, then I turned around and interviewed another woman. Another woman similar age, wanting the same outcomes. And here's the thing, no shade. Hey, you want what you want. Candle of the evening. Uh, it's from Hotel One in Brooklyn. It's their signature scent. And fragrance of the evening is one from Beverly Hills Parfumery. It's from a fragrance line called Fra uh, Fragrance Dubois. And it's called Sahra. S-A-H-R-A-A. -A. God damn it's good. It is so damn good. Probably one of my favorite fragrances of the last three years. Uh, I'm not going to lie. They are proud of their fragrances. They are not giving them away. Uh, but I will tell you this. A 50 ml bottle will be enough for a lifetime for most people. I I'm telling you, I'm glad I found this fragrance out. So uh, let's get into it. Since we're a little bit behind tonight, we're going to go ahead and get right into the program. And what is that? So I want, to, I want to mention something off the top because YouTube is a place where people seem to feel like because they said something or they did something and because they may have done it first or whatever, it's like people are making intellectual property claims to things that 
really you can't make intellectual property claims to. Now, we do the best to credit, give credit to things as, as possible, but when it's all said and done, the stuff we talk about on this channel is stuff that's been talked about in barbershops, basketball courts, locker rooms, golf courses. From time immemorial. Okay, it said we have no internet connection. From time immemorial, okay guys? So just like Ice Cube said back in the back in the day, in the whole in the whole thing, jacking for beats, you can't copyright no beats. You can't copyright no damn ideas. You can't copyright an idea, you can't copyright a talking point, you can't copyright a phrase. Why is this important? Because I'm going to talk about something tonight that I'm going to give credit somewhat. Somewhat. I'm going to give credit only because it, it's the right thing to do. Not because I have to. But I'm not going to give, I'm not going to extend credit all the way through because one thing did not lead to the other. Why am I, what are we talking about? Last night, when I was talking to the woman online, if you watch the video, let's get the likes up, folks. If you watched the video last night, one thing that would, should have stood out to you, I know it stood out to me, is when I was talking to this woman about dating and relationships and things like that, we got on the subject of you know, dating and, and, and sex. And she brought up the fact that she had gone out with guys uh, and knowingly she was not attracted to them. And she did exactly what that New York Times article talked about. One, th one out of three women report going on dinner, going on dates with men that they weren't attracted to. Okay. That's what she said. She mentioned it full, full fledged. It. Hey, yeah, I will go out with the man. I will deal with the man, and I will knowingly not want to be in a relationship with this guy. And you know what? How did she phrase it? She said, "Well, I feel like I'm playing football out here. I'm trying to get his time, attention, resources, and everything else without giving up the goodies." And to her, that's just fine. Why? Because modern women have weaponized one thing. Modern women's weapon of choice is the possibility. The possibility is modern women's weapon of choice. Let's define possibility. So we're all on the same page. <clears throat> the possibility. You guys see it? Now, a thing that may happen or be the case. That's the possibility. A thing that may happen or may be the case. That's the possibility, okay? Uh, a state of fact of being likely or possible. A thing that may be chosen or done out of several possible alternatives. But the first one, a thing that may happen. There is no better word. Likelihood, chance of, this, that. There is no better word than possibility. And modern women have weaponized the possibility. What have they weaponized the possibility of? Sex. The possibility of sex. There's a book on the title, on the very, on the, on the, on the concept, uh, and it's titled The Possibility of Sex, and there's something else in, and I haven't read the book, but it is, it, it is well known in, it's well, I would say it's known in these sectors. But the possibility of sex is a phrase. 
the likelihood of sex, the chance of sex. You guys know just like I know. You've heard me talk to women off and on, and women will often focus on the possibility more than the probability. Like now, it's not on Instagram when I'm talking to a woman saying that you're, kind of, you're shooting outside of your sexual marketplace value. And she asked the question after 30 minutes of conversation, well, what if I get up to this high income status and whatever? And what did I ask her to do? I said, what is the possibility? What is the probability that that will happen in the next five years? And out of her mouth, she said three, maybe 5%. To which I said, that means there's a 97, a 95 to 97% chance that it won't happen yet. You're asking a question about something with such a such a small chance of happening. That's because, ladies, you have weaponized the possibility so much that you have turned the gun on yourself. <clears throat> Modern women have been playing this possibility game so much that now you're shooting yourself with it. That's what you're doing. You're shooting yourself with this whole thing. You can't make this stuff up. Modern women have weaponized the possibility so much to now y'all are in trouble. Why do you say that, Kevin? Well, let's look at the evidence, shall we? Let's look at the evidence. Women are holding out getting married to men that, that, that are suitable. Why? You couldn't make this stuff up. Why are women holding out the possible? Why are women holding out marriage to men that are suitable? Why? Because it's possible later on down the road, somewhere on down the road, that I may find a guy who has more better elbows, nicer, nicer forearms, whatever. The possibility is enough to where women are they're just like, ah, screw it, I'll risk it. All right, that's what women are doing. You have turned something that you were using to your advantage against you. Women, modern women's uh -huh, favorite weapon is now a weapon that men are using. Because we have to. Get the likes up, folks. We need to, I'm a, okay, we need another 500 likes. Get them up. Come on, man. I shouldn't have to keep asking for this. So we're on the same page. The women have turned the possibility of everything. Women have turned the possibility so much that you're confusing yourselves. The possibility. How, how long will women stay in a, in, a, in, a, in a situation with a deadbeat dude? A situation because of the possibility. It's possible he may change his mind. And women, if you can start dealing with probability instead of possibility, the world will be a better place. But let's talk about the, the possibility is women's weapon of choice. But by far, women's, modern weapons, favorite weapon, their favorite weapon, their go-to, the thing that they use when all else fails is the possibility of sex. Women across the board have been taught and will use the possibility of sex to dangle out in front of men to get what they want. Here's the problem. Women know they're, what they're going to do. They know in, in a very short frame of time whether or not you're the kind of guy they want to have sex with. But how many times do we hear women say, well, I don't know. He may not be my so-and-so, but 
I go out with her a few times and maybe the attraction will raise such and so forth. And then you ask one question. There's a guy that didn't have to take you to 15 uh, steak dinners before you decide to have sex with him. Well, that's true. And that's the problem. Because now, because the sexual marketplace is deregulated, wide open, women are making their own choices. You're delaying marriage. You're delaying serious relationship. Now what you're doing is you're going out and getting your, sowing your wild oats, doing all this other kind of stuff. And the older you get, the higher, the more you want. So as your sexual marketplace value is going down, your price is going up. And you still think that the possibility of sex with you is high enough. No. There are women I have heard of who have three children by three different dudes in their late 30s or 40s talking about their virgin and don't want to have sex until they are married. Ladies, the possibility of sex is uh, the joke's on you. The joke's on you. Why? Why is the joke on you? Because there's so many women out here thinking they're holding on to this. You're the prize and you sitting on the prize and this and that and such and so forth. And men are back there doing this. (laughs) Men are like, what are you talking about? You got two kids and you 272 pounds. Greens, potatoes, tomatoes, lamb, rams, hogs, dogs, chicken, turkeys, rabbits, you name it! And you think that I need to take you to Ruth Chris and buy you a G-Wagon, and then maybe you'll think about having sex, and then possibly maybe you'll submit? You couldn't make this stuff up. I make this stuff up. You couldn't make this stuff up. A lot of women really believe that the possibility of sex holds the same weight as it did when you were young. But here's the problem. Think about when you're hungry for something. You got your mouth set for something. I love I love pizza, certain kind of pizza, but I love fried catfish. I love uh, barbecue, like ribs more than beef. But I love ribeye. I want you to think about your favorite meal, your favorite meal ever. And I want you to think about it this way. And I want you to think about it. You go to a restaurant. Let's say you go to someplace like Papado. Papado is still good to me. I like Papado. Shout out to the Papas family. You go to Papado and they tell you, I'm sorry, tonight we're on a two hour wait. But you've got your mouth set for that blackened oyster and shrimp fondue. Damn. No place else in the world makes black and oyster and shrimp fondue like the Pappas Corporation. There's no going here. There's no going there. You got to wait. So what do you do? You sit there with your friends or whatever. You get on your iPad, your phone. You do some work. You chitter chat with your friends. You do whatever you have to do to kill time because you got to have that black and oyster and shrimp fondue. That's just what it is. That's what it is. And then it goes from two hours to an hour and a half. You're running out of things to talk about. Well, you're still okay about this time because you've had a drink. You're talking to your friends. Then it goes from an hour and a half to an hour. Now you're starting to get a little antsy. You're starting to run out of stuff to talk about. You're You're starting to see who got set. Then it's 45 minutes. You're getting closer. Around the 90 minute mark, around an hour and a half mark, you are ready to go. You are salivating like Pavlov's dog. You're like, oh my God, oh my God, <laughs> we're about to, oh, oh my Jesus. Can I get you, can I bring an appetizer? You're like, no, 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 I don't want nothing. I don't want a soda, I don't want a water, I don't want a bread. I want to save all my available appetite for that black and oyster and shrimp fondue. I, I done drove all the way out of here, I done stood in line, and I'm about to, ooh, I'm about to, I'm about to, ooh. Fuck this shit. Ooh, I'm about to fuck this shit. Oh, I'm about to get it. 15 minutes, they'll tell you, hey, party of four, you're, you're up next. And you're like, oh, 
Then you sit down. Finally, they sit you down. And then your server comes over. Hey, welcome to Papa. Dough. We have some specials. Uh, 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 hold on. <laughs> Fuck out. I know what I want. The black and oyster and shrimp fondue. No oysters, sub shrimp. Because you know a lot of black folks don't eat oysters. I'm like, oh, we like to know what you want. Yeah. Then you've eaten it so long, you know the cook time. That's 8 to 10 minutes. 8 to 12, depending on the rest. And you're like, all right. All right. Oh, been two hours. We just put it in. Put it in before my drink order's in. And then you start, and you start doing this. You start watching the shit come out of the kitchen. Ooh, 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 ooh. You see that dish with the handle. You're like, oh, oh, is that my, oh. That's one, that's one, that's one. Oh, they didn't want to. That's one. Oh, yeah. Then all of a sudden, this person comes out with a tray, with the plates, and they look in your direction. Ho, 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 ho. They don't look over there. They don't look over there. They look in your general direction. Table 62. And they make a beeline to table 62. And you're like, Oh, 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 oh. You can hear it's like almost like slow motion. Slow motion for me. Move it. Slow motion for me. Uh, I like it like that. She anyway. <laughs> then they bring it over. They they put the tray stand down. Drop the tray. Did you guys have the black noise and shrimp do? Yes, we did. All conversation stops. You rolling up sleeves, game time. It is game. They move the stuff. She sets the black and oyster and shrimp fondue here. They put the garlic bread out there and pass out the side plates. And you're looking like a Viking chief. You take that spoon and you break the top of that cheese and all of a sudden this steam. And the smell of the lemon and the herbs and the spices and everything just hits you and you start to drool a little bit. Like, oh, 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 oh. You got a piece of hot garlic toast and you ladle out the black and oyster shrimp fondue and you put in the cheese, the sticky, and the Swiss cheese, sherry, wine sauce, and just dripping. You got a little mushroom, a little, little spinach, the right shrimp, a little, oh, I didn't smell, Poppy. And then you go, you know how we do, because it's hot. You do this like this. You bite it, but you can't wait. It's been two and a half hours. You bite down into it, and it's hot. So you go, because <laughs> you know it's hot and sticky. And you let it roll around so you don't burn your mouth, because you don't want to mess up this experience. Oh, and it's so, so good. It's decadently good. You don't want nothing to drink, because cold water with fat, and it just spoils. You don't want no one. you just like, ah, no one's talking. You literally almost eat your knuckle off trying to eat that black and oyster and shrimp fondue doing the garlic toast. But one ain't enough. One ain't enough. You go in, because there are two loaves of garlic, but come on, you go for another one. And you're ruined it all over again. But you're not nearly as ravenous. I mean, you're still hungry, but you're like, whoo. And you bite it. It's a little bit more cool now. And now you can really savor this one. You put a crawfish on there. You make sure you get another button mushroom, another spinach. I used to do this shit in real life. So now your, your, your blood sugar starts to rise because it's so rich, the fat and sugar and all that other stuff. And after the second one, you're like, ooh, the third one comes around. You're like, all right, round three, fight. Eh. You're not reaching over as heavy now. But it's still hot. It's still good. But, you know, we paid for it. You eat it. You start talking again. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. Drink a little something. Then after you eat the third one, time for the fourth one. (sighs) Recognize you're kind of full. Kind of full. Blood sugar is up. You you got you got stage four, stage three itis. You kind of like that's so rich. I can't really eat any more of it. You can't take it home and heat it up. Either you eat it now or it's gone. So now you have messed around and got an appetizer that was for four people, for two people, and you got to power through it. And you finish it. You and whoever you're sitting down with finish it. 
Then it's time for your entree, and they bring out the red snapper, Yvette, or whatever, and you've realized that you're going to have a to-go bag because you're only going to get a halfway through this meal, if at all. Messer, money y'all messed around and got the papado platter, the lunch plate. You taking food home? Why? Because that 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 dish you came here for was so rich, so good, it filled you up. You don't have any desire for it anymore. You've had it; it's good, but you realize that it, the rest of the meal was kind of wasted. You can't reheat catfish the same way. It don't seem, it don't, it's not the same. What, what is this all going to? Ladies, your sex is like the black and orange shrimp fondue. We've had it. We know what it is. There's nothing special about it other than we like you and we want to maybe the first bite or two, but after the first bite, eh, the second bite, uh, but after the third time of having sex with you, it's kind of like it's a vagina. But you ladies act like it's the first time every time and we're supposed to pay that high ass price. Women are out walking around acting like I got this great new dish called black and oyster and shrimp fondue. No one else has it anywhere. Only here, only for a limited time. Y'all walking around like the goddamn black and oyster and shrimp fondue with the damn McRee. <laughs> Come go to hell. Oh, Jesus Christ. You don't have, you're not, it's not the McRib, ladies. It's not the McRib. <laughs> <laughs> Big Shirley. <laughs> it is not the McRib, okay? Y'all are acting like we're supposed to just fiend for it. And they're like, all right, cool. Now, I want you to imagine if that server came out and said, okay, you enjoyed your black and oyster and shrimp fondue? That was your appetizer. Okay, you know what we have for dinner? We're going to serve you a larger black and oyster and shrimp fondue for dinner. Huh? That's the only thing we have for dinner is black and oyster and shrimp fondue. But I had it for appetizer. Nope, this is dinner. Oh, you didn't know? You signed the contract. You only get one. You get the same shit for appetizer. You get a big portion for dinner. You get a smaller portion for dessert. How many people will be really wearing to go for that? Ooh, give me the appetizer, dinner, and dessert portion of black and oyster shrimp fondue. And you want to charge progressively higher prices. If you got the appetizer portion, it's $20. $25. The appetizer portion is $25. The dinner portion is $150. And the dessert version, eh, it's $75. Uh, I don't want two hundred and fifty dollars worth of black and oyster and shrimp fondue. I, I I didn't even want three bites, but because men have an appetite for sex, that we are willing to stand in line for two hours, sit around with an annoying server, wait for a cook time for those three bites. You ladies think that we are willing to pay two hundred and fifty dollars for your macrio? <laughs> God damn it. No. no. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And that's where you screwed up. You ladies are charging too much for something that somebody else has already had. And we know it. And you know we know it. And the older you get, the more people that have eaten your McRib. <laughs> the, more, <laughs> shit. the more people that have, who had your McRib. Because you talk about your previous, you talk about the previous franchise owner. Oh, I dated this guy and I dated this guy. And we sit back saying, that's one, that's two, that's three. All right, you've had three relationships, so that's three, that's three diners. Oh, four, re five relationships. So one, two, three, four, five. And you expect me to pay premium prices for a dish you've served five times. And that's not including when you went down to Cabo or to Jamaica or the Bahamas or when you went to Tijuana that weekend or Vegas or whatever, or when you went to uh, Chippin, yeah, you done, you done gave that shit away for the price of some nuggets. 
<laughs> mm, mm-hmm, mm. Yeah, you have, and we know it. So now men are hip to this. The women leverage the possibility of everything with us. Possibility. And see, women used to say, well, men leverage the possibility of relationships. No, we don't. That may have, that may have flown in 1972. But since 1995, that shit's out the window. What's 1995? Uh, the, the year Big Mama died. In the mid-90s, we lost the last of the Big Mamas. The women who were baby boomers, who gave birth to the baby boomers, the women who were born between 1915 and 1930, 1910 and 1930. We lost them in 1995. Soul food. I want you to remember when Big Mama died, everything lost. I did this broadcast where he talked about the 90s and dating. And 1995 is a seminal moment because that was when the last of the Big Mamas started to die, my grandmother's generation. And ever since then, this has been a... We have been... We will be, we were, we, we have been in turmoil. Why is this important? Because you ladies are still walking around expecting men to pay high prices and you're still using the same old talking points. Well, men leverage the possibility of relationships. Men initiate almost 100% of marriages. Women initiate about 70 to 80% of divorces. And I said this on somebody's channel today. I've heard more women in general, black women in particular, still talking that same old bullshit about, the, well, the reason we walk away from marriages is because we're being abused and cheated on. Shut the French toast up. It is a lie from the pit of hell, and I rebuke it. I rebuke. Black women cheat at a 24% rate when asked. Black men cheat at a 28% rate. You are not being cheated on like these women say, and you're not being uh, 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 up like hotcakes. That's bullshit. But it's something that women say to jerk, shirk accountability for the fact that you're just leaving relationships. And guess what? Every relationship you go to, you expect a guy to pay more. You expect the guy to pay more and more and more and more. And guess what? You think because you've made bad decisions, because you've laid down with this dude and that dude and given it away when you shouldn't get away, you think you're going to get the, la the, la the person that you want to, be to pay the most for it to, 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 to drive it off the lot and sign the papers. You want him to pay the most and give him the least. Gentlemen, modern women's favorite weapon is the possibility that they'll have sex with you. This isn't a new concept to me. This is not a new. For, this is something that men have known for the longest, but now it is time for you to start telling women that we know this is what you're doing. This is why when I said high value men don't cheat, they exercise options. This is why when I said women should not go out on a date number one with a man they are not sexually attracted to, and I said you should not go on date number two with a man that you would not have sex with on that date. That is why it sent shockwaves through the, the dating and relationship community because what it did is it called women to a task to say, if you're not sexually interested in a man, leave his pockets alone. But no, I need time to be able to go out to see if he can raise attraction. So in other words, he needs to do this and do that and jump over this barrel and do this and do that and this and that. And, that, that. and then maybe somewhere on down the line, you would be willing to give it to him. Remember the coochie coupon? See, women don't like the fact that we're talking about no to the possibility of sex with them. They don't like it because it's their number one most favorite weapon. It's their go-to. It's their sky hook. It's their whatever their go-to play old. It's Cap Boso over the middle. It's Bo Jackson on the outside. Every game has a play that breaks the game. Every game has a glitch. And the possibility of sex is the modern woman's glitch in the dating and mating arena. Until recently. There's been a patch. 
There's been a patch to remove the glitch. It's called Men's Centric Content, a Men's Centric Universe, MCU. There's been a patch that men are getting to update the software to address the glitch, the bug. And the fix is get consent up front. Be direct. Indirect. If, gentlemen, if you continue to not get clarification on what's happening and why you're doing what you're doing, you leave yourself open to all these things. And then to that end, the book, The Possibility of Sex, as I understand it, uh, discusses this in detail. I haven't read it. Um, but I will say this. I've never been much of an indirect kind of person. I've always been much more speak my mind. Why? Because when I, well, I'm not going to lie, man, say that. I'm not going to say that. When I was less speaking my mind, I got played a lot. Younger. Trying to be the nice guy. Going the indirect. And it's much better to just get up front. Look, ladies, we're not asking you to get out here and sleep with everybody. Nope. Not saying that at all. Don't misquote me. Don't put it on this blog or that blog. Kevin Sammy's want women to go out here. No, no, no. I'm saying don't go out with men you're not sexually attracted to. Like your big mama would have told you, don't accept nothing from no man that you don't plan on giving him something for. Don't use the fact, well, I didn't ask him for it. I didn't beg him for it. Don't use any, anything where I would have paid. No, no. Because if you... Let me give you a different example. I hate people who don't tip. I can't stand them. Can't stand them. I don't hang out with people who don't tip. And I'll tell them to their face, can't stand you. Because they can tip. And when they'll tell you, I don't tip based on principle. They got some bullshit ass reason. Well, they should pay them a living wage and they should do this and do that, and, uh, and it's not my fault. I paid for the meal and this and that, and who shot John? And I'm like, okay, I hear you. But if you, since you're such a principled in the person, you're standing 10 toes down on your square with your manhood and all this other shit, here's what you do. You look your server in the eye before they go get a thing and say, hey, Carrie, Charles, just want you to know that no matter what level of service you deliver me today, I will tip you zero dollars and zero cents. On principle alone, there is nothing you can do to change my mind, and this is not a direct impact upon you, your level of service, or your professionalism. I just wanted you to know that there's nothing you can do that's going to get me to pay anything other than the minim the, what's stated on my check. I have never had someone to take that challenge. Because when you say, why don't you do it? Well, man, I ain't going to do that. Why? Why? Well, they may spit in my food. No. Their camera's everywhere. They're not going to spit in your food. But the reality is they wanted to get the service. The reality is if I do that, my food will come slow. The service will be bad. I won't get refills. So I'm like, so in other words, you want them to do the job they're supposed to do. You understand the custom, what's customary, but you, because it's not obligated, because it's not law, because it's not, you don't have to do it. You're playing in the gray area. Tipping is the custom. You know, it's the custom. It's the accepted custom. This is how many women operate in the sexual marketplace with men they're not sexually attracted to. They don't tip. That's right. <laughs> McRibs tipping, we are all over the place, but that's the point. Now, how many women would be, if you went to a man and said, look here, um, Keith, Brad, Lee, Ahmed, Keith, and Enrique, Mr. High Value, Mr. Blue Henry, Mr. White Collar Henry, Mr. Hit Squad, Mr. Uh, High Earner Not Rich Yet, whatever you are, look, no matter what you do, no matter how many times you call me, text me, you can send me flowers, candles, perfume, you can take me to five-star restaurants, I mean, five-star hotels, 
fancy restaurants, trips, this, you could buy me this, that. Nothing you do will change the fact that I am not going to have sex with you. You do not sexually excite me. You do not sexually turn me on. And there's nothing you can do that will make me want to have sex with you. And let me address this in the Dumb and Dumber movie. Is there a scenario that could happen that I might have sex with you? Well, I guess there's a scenario where I might have sex with you. Now, reality can be whatever I want. There's a scenario I might have sex with you, but it's like a one in 14 million, 653,972 chance. The man would not do the Jim Carrey and say, then there's hope. You know what he would do? He would say, thank you for being honest with me. Enjoy your life. But that would mean you wouldn't get to go to La Colonia, uh, Le Billa Bouquet, Capitol Grill, Foco de Chow, uh, where did I go? Mastro's, Salt Bay, Spago, uh, Ocean Prime, uh, that was probably all right. Um, Tavern on the Green, what is that restaurant over there? In, what is that down there in Brooklyn? The Riverside Cafe, the River Cafe? Yeah, you wouldn't be staying in four star hotels, five star hotels. No, no, you would be getting nothing. And that would be fair, just like the person who goes to the restaurant and says, I don't tip. They would get their meal. They would get their meal. They wouldn't get anything extra. They'd pay for their meal and leave. But see, we already have stuff like that. It's called fast food or a buffet or something like that. But when you come to a restaurant and sit down and they have servers, the custom is you know it's different. So gentlemen, if you don't tip, don't talk shit about women who play games with the possibility of sex. That's on you. I know many guys who don't tip and then complain about the games women play. I'm like, to you too, buddy. You can't shirk one custom and then expect another one. But maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe I'm all wrong. Maybe, maybe I'm just screwed up. Maybe I'm just, oh, maybe I don't know what the hell's going on. I don't know, but I'm willing to have the conversation. But I have a question to the women out there. Do you think women weaponize the possibility of sex with modern men? Yes, absolutely. Oh my God. I would, that's the perfect question. You, the perfect, yes, absolutely, yes. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Y yes. Yes. They, I mean, I, I, I don't know if I heard that correctly. Do they weaponize the possibility of sex, guys? What do you think? Yes. Absolutely. Oh, my God. I w That's the perfect question. You, the perfect, yes, absolutely. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Ladies, if you don't like that men are starting to Netflix and chill, if you don't like the fact that men aren't dating anymore, if you don't like the fact that this or that, then understand what you've done to get yourself here. You've weaponized the possibility of relationship, femininity, commitment, I mean, submission, sex, agreeableness. You weaponized everything men are seeking to gain from you. You put a price tag on it, and it's but the but the fact of the matter is you're running a scam. You have a price tag on it, but you don't intend to deliver what you don't, but you don't intend to deliver. You wouldn't accept that in your world, but you expect men to just get out here and do it day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out, and not complain about it. And just keep on moving like that's just what it costs because you gotta make real <laughs> because you gotta make real because you think you gotta make real.
Again, I remember what we're talking about. Women are so emboldened because they have a McRib, so they think that we're supposed men are supposed to be stupid. And what told them this? Execute order sixty six. Now I know there are and all this other kind of stuff and blah 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 blah. And I know, no, no, no. And what would I tell those guys? Beta, beta. No, I'm not. I'm promoting that you just be up front. But see, guys, I'm open the call line. Just a second. The reason women don't like this is it cause it would directly impact their people skills. Because just like that woman I talked to the other day, and I asked, "What do you bring to the table?" And she said, "My looks." I'm like a four hundred thousand, six hundred thousand dollar man, six hundred fifty thousand dollar year man, and all you bring to the table is her looks. And she said, "Well, w- what else could he want?" I mean, um, I, I, I mean, I look good. Now, understand, this woman was not in the danger zone. Danger zone. Rather, she was in no man's land. A 36-year-old stripper who had a boyfriend and a man was in the background telling her, be truthful. Say you got a boyfriend. And all she was focused on is city girls, we up, get in the bag, such and so forth. And this is what's this is what's happened when we tell women to focus on yourself. Focus on yourself. It only hurts the women. Women who are focusing on yourself, let me show you. I mean, give you, give me, let me tell you something. I'm going to open a call line because I want to hear from the women who think I got it all. Well, we got questions. Because I know the, the women who think that I'm off, but um, I, 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 I beg to differ. I beg to differ. And here's, my, and here's what I believe I believe you may feel like you're winning, but you're getting this. Uh, a pyrrhic victory, a victory that inc- that inflicts devastating toll on the victor, is tantamount to a defeat. A victory when the toll on the winning party does not offset the rewards of success. In the business world, pyrrhic victories often occur in the courtroom when a company wins a judgment, but it costs far exceeds any monetary rewards. Today, in modern dating, Modern relationships are a series of pyrrhic victories. You win the battle, but you lose the war. Many, win, many people wanted, there are many people who wanted me to go on Nicki Minaj's panel or platform and in an unprovoked fashion attack this woman. For what? To get an ooh, ah, to have a world star moment? How would that have helped the outcome of men? Unjustified. Looking for a problem when there was not one to be found. Ooh, ooh, this happened and that. And then conversely, there are people in her chat room asking her to do the same thing. And she's like, I don't have a reason. But see, that's what modern dating and relationships have become for so many people. Pyrrhic victories. You win, but you lose. (laughs) But maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe I'm completely off. Maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just out here, you know, talking shit. But what I will tell you this is Valentine's Day is coming up Monday. Big Shirley, where's your Valentine? Where's your Valentine? Where's your Valentine's Day? I don't need a cookbook. Where's your Valentine's Day? I'm a PhD. Where's your Valentine? (laughs) Meow, 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 meow. Where's your Valentine? 
I don't need a Valentine. Recording in progress. I got myself. I don't need no ninja. I don't need no man. I'm strong and independent. I'm all right by myself. What I need, what do I need some man to come validate me for? I make $50,000 a year. And then when I retire, I'm going to travel the world. Okay. Ladies only. Where am I wrong? Many women will say, men, here you go. I want to hear why I'm wrong. Because I know there are a lot of women who don't like the fact that we're talking about how they weaponize the possibility of sex. And, and here's the thing. The possibility of sex used to be something that they weaponized, but now women are weaponizing the possibility of everything, relationship, femininity. The possibility of femininity has been weaponized too. How many times have we heard Men in general, black men in particular, you ain't got no power, you ain't got this, you ain't got that. You need to make a certain amount of money. If I can, if you make, if you make enough money for me to quit my job and retire and live in a life of relative luxury, then you are, then you'll get my femininity. But if I have to do what I'm doing now, absolutely not. How many times have I asked a woman, if you were willing, are you willing to work just as hard in a relationship uh, uh, as you are now? Women have been told that a relationship is supposed to make their lives easier. This is why many women, they don't want, they don't want relationship. They don't want marriage. They want luxury lifestyle. Go back to what I talked about the other day. And I'm like, uh, you want a nanny, a housekeeper, and everything else. So, effectively, you'll be incubating a child. Look, Luna. Money work. El mundo quiere dinero. All right, I need 
what's going on? You know that's too damn long to be. Come on, I'm like, I don't want to do this one. All right, how old are you again, 20, 29? No, I'm 36. 36, okay. I, 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 mean, I talk to a lot of people. Okay, 36, what's I going on with you? Young. Okay, so basically, I've never even, I always wanted to get married, <clears throat> but just being serious with someone, um, I don't know, maybe till like about 32, I just didn't think about it. I just was just still having fun. Okay. And what, is it, what, what, is, what does that mean? Uh, just dating. Casually dating people, not necessarily having sex with them. Okay. But of course, everyone wants to have sex. Yeah. So it's like, it's like I'm playing football and I'm trying to pass the goal without doing it in a way sometimes. So, you know, you're robbing, so you're robbing me. Uh, a little. Not a little. It's, it's, I, mean, it, I mean, this is where you ladies got to start. See, what men want to hear from y'all is the truth. Yeah, well, I, I'm giving it to you. Well, because you know you want a man to spend his time, attention, resources on you, and the whole deal is sex. Uh -huh. How would you feel if on payday they played football with your ass? No, okay, look it. This is what I'm saying. But guys that you're just dating, you know, I don't want to, I, I want to say after I go on a few dates with you, then, you know, I might want to have sex with you, but I just don't want to have sex with you. Huh? Bullshit. Bullshit. You're a grown woman. You're a grown woman. Okay, we're going to be honest. We're going to be honest. We're going to be honest. We're going to be, you're a grown woman. You're not a virgin. And you and I both know that a woman makes up her mind whether or not she wants to have sex with men. You know if you're gonna have sex with them or not. Okay, maybe stay after the Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh no, no, okay, no, 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 no. That doesn't play over here. You're, you're 36, you're not 22. This part, and see, you're not listening. This is why men are walking away from marrying and dealing with y'all because you're not honest. There are men you have, you have slept with and didn't require three or four or five dates. All right, then that's the bottom line. That's the base price. And to me, and it's like, if he can get it for this price, why do I have to do all this? That's why I say, ladies, do not go out on date number one with a man that you are not sexually attracted to. Do not go on date number one. Don't go out there talking about our date to see if I like you. French toast that. Keep your ass at home. Don't take his money. Ask all the questions you need to do. Because if you go out with us, we're expected to smash. <laughs> okay, look it. I'm going to give you an example. I have dated and dealt with people that I didn't actually were attracted to them when I first met them. But as I got to know them, I did become attracted to them. So that can happen too. You know, this I is just... what women do. They play games with the possibility of sex. The guys you went out with, were you paying all the bills? Were you paying for everything? 100%? No. No. Then it's bullshit. <laughs> it's bullshit. I mean, you said not, saying, saying well, I, not saying that I expect for them to pay all the time because I'm a nice girl. I'm from California. You know, we're it has nothing not to do with being there. It's not no. Look, did you grow up with your father? My dad, my father died when I was um, 11 years old. Well, you should have heard this somewhere in your life. Don't accept nothing from a man that you don't expect to do something for. Yeah. So what but you're you talking know, about, okay. what, no, what you're talking about, no, see, okay. see, this is why so many women in your age range are going to be destined to be alone because you're still trying to make, you're still trying to pretty it up. What you did was you ran game, you mm -hmm. hustled, and you deceived dudes. And then you wonder why these guys get out here and become mean and fuck boys mm -hmm. because they run into women like you playing games. Okay, so what? if I What's wrong home. with not? What's wrong with being <laughs> upfront and saying I'm not sexually attracted to you? I'm not going to go on a date with you. What's wrong with just doing that? 
nothing because sometimes you know i mean i'll just say no thank you i'm not interested i say that and some guys now. they might get mad and now be, you know, now now I but you didn't do now. it then i didn't know how i didn't have the knowledge to do that okay but you did but you did know they wanted to have sex yes who doesn't i mean it's kind of like but you weren't that's the point yeah i didn't want to well, see, that's the point. See, so see, I want you guys to understand. Women know we want to have sex. They want to have sex. But see, what they do is you sit around and say, well, he accepted the date. He didn't have to do it. Would you want, if you had a son, would you want somebody to treat your son that way? No, but I will. And that's it. There's no, there's no but. See, anything you say before, after, after, before but is bullshit. And here's the thing, you're still in the dating market, right? Do you want yeah. to be married one day? I want to have kids and get married, but we'll All right, see. well, the way you're coming across is your mindset is still where it was. Yeah. It's a chameleon rebel. And men, men pick up on this kind of stuff because it is un, it is un, it, you do not get, how tall are you? I'm 5'2". Dress size? A two. So a woman who is cute, over 30, single, childish. It's crazy. <laughs> That's what we, because you have run across plenty of suitable men. And you've gotten to be this age and unmarried with no kids. And that's what men think. So my thing is what you want, cool. How do you plan on getting what you want? Well, now I'm just putting myself out there a little bit more. To do what? Than what I was in the past. I was uh, so, at one point, I just wanted to date an athlete or a basketball player or a rapper or something. I would only try to be you know in the area or go to clubs try to meet those type of people but now i'm much more open i guess people older and i don't know i don't want to say i'm settling but i'm just more open i'm more did you go to college did you go to college did yeah. you hold the phone steady could i you went just, to school could you hold the, could you hold the phone stay to lay uh-huh i went to cal state LA. okay could you just hold the phone steady because it's moving all over could you set it down so it doesn't move. Because I don't know if you ladies hear what you hear from men. I'm here. Go ahead. Take your time. Okay. You got a book or something you can set it down on? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing my best. Because, you know, I really didn't expect to get on here. And I was relaxing watching TNC. And I'm just so surprised. Okay. But... Okay. See? Go. All right. Wherever happened to you? It seemed like you just disconnected. Oh. All right. Here's what me and here. There I am. Here's what me and here. I'm 36 years old. I used to run around. I used to run around and want to uh, have athletes and entertainers, and you weren't doing that just because they're great guys. It was because of their resources and their attention. All of the above. Right. So now, and then you, then you, then you, not even so. Man, you, you're coming across as a manipulative woman. You know men want to have sex. You're going out with men you're not sexually attracted to. Just because you had sex with one guy that you who weren't initially sexually attracted to, y'all aren't honest. You don't enter into, into good faith, and then you get to be 36, and you say you want to have kids and all this other stuff. And here's what men are saying. All right, I need to know about her mindset. And what you're saying is, I put myself out there. But what are you putting out there? My look. What else do they want me to put? 
It only, I mean, like, you, you can, I can talk to somebody for so long and, you know, my brain or whatever, but after a while, they can't see, I can't see. Um, so anyways, um, I might not like them like they like me. You know, I might be a little more sweeter than what they thought I was. I, they they might have thought I was a mean, bad girl, but really I'm not, you know. So you just never know. Or then I thought I met somebody that I really was interested in that was in the music industry. But come to find out, I, he wanted to date girls that made more money than him. I asked you... Basically, what are you putting out there? And you said your look. What What else am I supposed to look? I mean, what else am I supposed to put out there? Okay, let's go with that. How many kids do you want to have? Two, or I'll be fine with one. Can you turn off the TV or whatever? Who's that? It's a background noise. What is that? My okay. friend talking that <laughs> wants to be a part of it. Too. No, no. <laughs> Tell me about a boyfriend. He's talking to that. I have a boyfriend, but I mean, he's a boyfriend. He not we not married, so that means I'm still single. That's true. No, I'm I'm single. If I'm not married, I'm single. No, we not. My that boyfriend. Bro. That's not your boyfriend, is it? No. All right. Do you have another room we can go into? Yes. Why don't you go? Why don't you do that? Okay. Wait, the lights don't work. Mm hmm. Oh. <clears throat> All righty then. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> I'm like, what's going on? Well, uh, we're trying to figure that one out. Okay, there we go. All right. So, yes, if you're not married, you're single. Yeah, period. Okay. No other way to but you say you want to have two kids. Yes. Uh, do you want to have to work to pay significant bills after you're pregnant and married with the first child? No, that's why I never got had kids before. I'm talking about after you're married. Once no. you're married, do you want to have to work no. after you're married? No. Oh, okay, okay. No. Stop. Turn off your comments or whatever so you can focus on the conversation. I'm trying to have a conversation. Yeah, I'm 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 talking okay. to you. What percent what over what percentage of the family financial load do you want to have to be responsible for for a lifetime? For your two kids and your husband, what percentage of the overall family financial load? I mean, do you want your kids to be able to go to college if they want to? Yes. Do you want to be able to travel nationally and internationally with your family? Yeah, I already had traveled by myself, but yes. Uh, okay. If I would have uh, uh, husband, ma I would. Ma'am, 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 ma let me. If I, yes, I don't want to have to pay for anything if okay, I'm there. So you want to be a housewife? Yes. Okay, uh, were you raised to be a wife? All my grandmas and my, my mom was That's a, a yes or no, husband. that's a yes, yes or no. Yes. Your mother was a housewife? Yes. Your father died at what age? My father died when he was When 30. you were what age? When you were what oh, age? I was 11, but my mom never married my dad. She married my stepdad. So when I was born, I first knew my stepdad before I knew my dad. How many children did your mother have? How many Four. children? Four. Any, any, any other, any sisters? I have three sisters. They so, all have kids. Excuse me. Except me. Excuse me. It's four, huh? it's four girls? Five. Three girls, one boy. So your mother, so they all, but they're not married? Uh, one of my sisters is, my younger but, sister. But the other ones aren't? And the ones that aren't married have children? Mm-hmm. So ma'am, were they raised in a household with you? Yep. Then you weren't raised to be a housewife. I'm the oldest. I don't know. I don't. I didn't do what they did. They didn't do what I did. I, I did everything separate and different than how they did. Ma'am, ma'am, don't get defensive. Oh, uh, uh, I understand what you're saying. Well, do you think you're moving like a woman who's a housewife? Why not? 
That's not, no, no. You don't answer a question with a question. I ask you a question. Do you feel like you, do you think you're moving like a woman who's a housewife? Yes. I take care, I have- Is that house, a, is that house a cave? No, listen, I have- you're moving like a damn barbarian. There's no listen, ma'am. You're oh. talking about, you're talking about you went around, you, you were a groupie for athletes. You, you, okay. you, you manipulated dudes. You got a boyfriend now. And now you want to be a housewife, and all you bring into the table is your looks. And I'm just going with it. But how much is a man going to have to pay your 36-year-old self to be a housewife? How much is he going to have to make to, 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 to take care of you and two kids? Whatever it is to maintain the life. What state do you live in? I live in, I, I have two residents. I live in Texas, and I also live in Los Angeles. And I pay both my rents by myself. My boyfriend and has fuck congratulations. I don't care yes. if you can do what adults do. I'm really doing my best, man, but you're about to make me go there. I want this is because to, this is because of your it. attitude. I, I need you to chill out. I need you to chill out. Five seconds. Okay. This is not a good this is not a good place to be in. I'm trying to have a conversation with you, but you're over here trying to cap or whatever. And I don't do that. Uh -huh. I ask you how much would a man need to make to provide for you and two children? Annually, probably about two hundred thousand. In what state? California, both in California. Ma'am, no way, no way. I just left LA. A slice of pizza, two slices of pizza and a soda is seventeen dollars. Well, where were you? No, ma'am. I was in LA. Look, ma'am, I do this for. I, listen, this is part of the problem. You ladies don't know how much it costs to be a. A man in charge of stuff. $200,000 in LA? No way. You want upper class children. Each one of your children is going to cost around how? $480,000 to raise. That's almost a million dollars worth of kids. Plus, you don't plan on doing anything. And he has to pay all your bills, all your things, and you. And then he has, well, to, have and he has to have what he does. You're talking every bit about four hundred thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. That's why you're. That's why you're talking about athletes and musicians and all that other kind of stuff. And that's cool. And what percentage of men make that kind of money? Maybe ten, fifteen. I don't know. Not that much. Do you well, care if he's California, black? Do you care if he's black or not? In California. Do you care if he's black or not? Uh. Yeah, I want him to be black. Uh huh. So, what percentage of black men? What percentage of black men? What? See, when I'm talking, that means okay. you stop. That's the only one rule. Can can we agree to that, one, please? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because it's disrespectful. What percentage of black men earn over four hundred thousand dollars? You say ten, fifteen percent? Maybe thirty. And where'd you go to college? Cal State LA. Mm -hmm. Would you be surprised to find out that 10% uh, of American males earn $100,000 or more? 10% make $100,000 or more. When you're talking about making $250,000 or more, that's 3%. Making $400,000, you're talking about 1% of American men. And when you talk about black men, it's roughly about 10%, half of a Half of 1%. So if I had 100 black men, you're talking about one in that room. And let me ask you this. That one man can meet your socioeconomic standards, right? Which are pretty high. That means he can meet a lot of women. Why would he choose you over the thousands of other women who are coming at him? Because I'm natural. And I am willing to work. I have been working if I needed to. And I, I don't have any kids. And I'm cute. And I'm willing and able to do what I need to do as a wife or mother. What more would he want? I don't, you know, I'm not fat. I got a degree. It's not a master's, but it's something. So you think a man goes out here and makes himself a top 1% man and a that's that's like an athlete. And to 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 win at that level, you what do you get know. if you win? What do you get when you win a championship? A ring. Or 
what is it commonly known, what is it commonly known as a trophy right yes are you a trophy wife i can be i didn't ask can you you are you a trophy wife definitely i am uh-huh what would you rank yourself just your face fresh face out of the shower well i'm fresh right now so i'll say like an eight an eight so you put yourself up there with beyonce yeah Okay. I'm a little bit younger than Beyonce, and I still look like I'm in my 20s. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. So, again, you're Monique, you think that a man, just because you're natural and you're cute, what else could he want? All right, and let me I have a bachelor. Uh, uh, hey, 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 hey. Okay. So, do you plan on homeschooling your children? No. Uh, if I, pri I don't private plan school? On private School or public school? Probably private. Okay. So do you plan on having a housekeeper? Definitely. A maid? I have one now. <laughs> so so, so uh, you're going to have someone else to, to help prepare for prepare meals too? No. I cook really well. Okay. So in other words, all you're going to do is incubate a child. <laughs> No. <laughs> you make that sound so funny. Man, if you weren't famous before, you are now. <laughs> you said she belongs to the street. Look, it, I, <laughs> I waited so long to be able to have kids and to do everything. I always wanted to really do everything right. So that's why I never Why are you what kind of what kind of professions would a man need to have in order to make four hundred thousand dollars or more legally? Maybe a lawyer. Um I dated a few lawyer people before. Uh lawyer people. I don't know, a professional and No 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 no. I want specifics. You're thirty almost four you're you're closer to forty than you are to thirty. I need you to look more specific. You said a lawyer. You dated lawyer people. Okay, good. You dated lawyer people. A what few. other kind? Okay. Um, I dated. A what? No, 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 no. I asked you what kind of professions. We got. We got. A, we a got, teacher, a lawyer. Excuse me. What kind of? What kind of teacher? What kind of teacher was he? Uh, an English teacher. At what level? High school. High school English teachers make almost a half a million dollars a year, do they? No, probably. I don't know. I, I didn't seem like that much, but yeah, they were. I mean, they weren't poor. They have a nice car. If they know if they make, depending on what district they're in or uh -huh. what city, then yeah. So, to, so I want you to understand. So, the, so the people at the local high school are making four hundred thousand on a teaching certificate. Well, I mean, it depends on where you say local. You mean local pastor? Yeah, yeah, okay. What else, ma'am? Okay, pastor? okay, ma'am. Okay, okay. Teachers. Then what else? Lawyers and teachers. What else? Um, regular working people, people that own No, no, no. Professions. Stores. Professions, ma'am. I'm asking. This is just something. It's not a trick question. You want a man that's earning this kind of money, you should at least be able to understand what he should do for a living. I dated people that... Oh, I didn't ask who you dated. I asked you what kind what? of professions. Cannabis. Cannabis is not a profession. Cannabis is a rapper, but it's not a profession. I'm talking about in the medical marijuana um, industry. Uh -huh. Like, but big, though. Okay. Like, what else? Really what else? And who else have I dated? I have not... Ma'am, ma'am. Please look forward. Uh, man, I need you to look forward. I need you to see that you're talking again. And I'm with you. I ask you what professions. I'm not asking you who you dated. I'm simply asking you of the wide world out there, what kind of professions would a man need to have to make four hundred thousand dollars or more legally? At thirty six years old and a college graduate, you should be able to focus and answer that question. Um, a, probably a barber that works on set, you know, you, it's just different. It just depends on what level you own of your profession. Period. You could be a barber and you could 
uh, Barbara off so, so I want you guys to understand. And, I want you to understand, ma'am. Ma'am, do not over talk me. The fuck is wrong with you? I've asked you that so many times. I want you. Okay, I'm answering the question. You get it, but man, you I'm cannot over talk me. Okay, I'm listening now. Ma'am, you're talking about lawyers, teachers, cannabis, and a barber. Only one of those has the potential of really doing that consistently. And that's only some sort of attorneys. And my point is, ma'am, if you can't identify the professions that a man must have, how are you going to identify which men you need to put yourself in front of? That you said you're putting yourself out there more. You can't even tell us what professions. I just did. No, you really didn't. Because in the comment section, you don't see all these hearts going up. I don't see anything. When you, I don't well, see, I'm I in don't the see comment section comments. when this video is over, and you oh. hear people talking about a teacher or a barber making $400,000, they're not going to be very kind. Please, ma'am, stop. I'm trying to help you. Stop. OK. They're not going to be very kind because it sounds crazy. And at the no, end you, of the day, I, 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 no, 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 I, I, I will shut this shit down and finish dating. it on my own. I don't need, you've already fucked yourself up enough. I'm trying to help you dig your way out. But if you really want me to, I'll finish it on my own. Maybe you're 36 years old. I talking just, about, you're talking about what, and all you're talking about is you bring your cute self to the table. That's a just reward, that's a just trophy. And you're going to have kids in private school and a housekeeper. Yeah. Do you earn over six figures? Definitely. What's your profession? Right now, I'm a stripper. I dance all over. I go state to state. Because you know why? There you go, I people. Was, I was working as a... There you uh, go. I was working there you go, people. I knew, I knew, I knew 15 minutes ago what I was talking to. And it's not about being a dancer. I, I've worked in, I, I, I uh, did business in clubs. I like strippers and it's good, but it's about a mindset. You ain't learned nothing. Why you ain't not? learned nothing. Because you're still talking like you on the pole. You're still talking like a 19 year old girl. You ain't talk, you don't even know the professions. You've been in these places, you dance and you got money. You haven't even been able to identify your targets appropriately. Low class, low rent, low rank. Get out of here. A $400,000 a year man, and that's all he is. What else could he want? Like I said, shout out to the dancers. There's nothing on the calendar for the next 30 days. If you're going to dance, at least learn the game. At least learn how. You're almost 40 years old talking about barbers make up almost a half a million dollars a year. Regular ass high school teachers. Now, if anybody thinks I was hard on this woman, remember, she's a manipulator of men. She deceives men. She's a groupie, self admitted that she runs out the athletes, entertainers, musicians, hustling men over here who are normal guys, playing games with guys like that. And if you think that's not bad enough, she had a guy in the house and said, Tell him you got a boyfriend. This woman talking about she wanna be married, and she on here talking about she got a boyfriend. And this is what's out here amongst she belongs to the streets. This is what men have to pick from. And I want, you let, I want you ladies to think I'm hard on women to understand. This woman felt like she'd be settling for an average man. I didn't have to go down that far. Insane. You cannot make this shit up. Welcome to World Star. And, and the sad part is women like her really have been told that they are, that they are just the shit, that you are the prize. And any man would be lucky to have you. And what is it? And, and, and again, what do you bring to the table? My vagina. Yeah, go ahead. How old are you? Uh, 40. 
40? All right. Yes. Um, what do you have to add to the topic? Uh, well, I think I generally agree that you shouldn't kind of sign up for something if you're if you don't have the proper intentions. And um, I think generally people know what they want when they initially enter into uh, an agreement or want to go on a date. But sometimes people are kind of um, unsure of what they want in a relationship. Uh -huh. what they are you want married? Or, are you married? Or are you single? I forgot to ask. Are you married? Or are you single? It's okay. Um, I'm divorced. Okay. So what do you mean people don't know what they want? Well, so a person, a person may, a woman may see a man and he may ask her on a date and she uh, may agree and she could be at any place in her life where maybe she's just beginning to get into the dating scene again, or maybe she's been dating for a while um, and maybe she's had some bad situations or, you know, maybe it's not that she's uninterested in him, but maybe she just has some other considerations that may impact or affect how she, um, you know, how she's moving through that dating phase. And so while she may not be ready to date, I mean, ready to have sex initially, she may not be, it may not be that she's using him for money or using him for something that's not one. I want work. you to understand how, what maybe. men are hearing. What men are hearing is maybe she is, and maybe she's not, and maybe this, and maybe that, and possibly, that ain't got nothing to do with us. Nothing. Okay. You know what that got to do with us? When you get well, your shit together, well, call. No, 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 no. I'll let you go on. You know what that has to do with men? Okay. Respect everything you have to say. When you get your shit together, call me. Mm -hmm. When you're, when you're, when maybe is no longer come out of your mouth, call me. Right. I, I, I think you're right about that. So even though, so I think a woman should be in a proper position today. I don't think you should go in kind of you know, half ready or half willing. So, Sometimes so, so, why, so I'm going to have to offer pushback. Then why would you give me that example? Well, because sometimes you don't know. Sometimes when you begin. No, it, no, it, no. It, we don't, see, That's the thing. We don't have to French toast. No, ma'am. You're mm -hmm. a grown woman. And the women you're talking about are grown damn women. Would they right. go to apply for a job if they did not plan on showing up to the job? Mm -hmm. would they go with these women you're talking about go apply for a job if they did not intend to show up and do the job well, well no so I, I, I'm i not saying no ma'am I didn't stop stop okay excuse stop right sorry. there we don't we're not just we're not combating mm -hmm. but you need to follow the logic mm -hmm. why would that woman not uh, go apply for a job if she had the intentions of not showing up. Right. Well, why would she do that? I don't that? think you should apply. No, no, no. Um, listen to what I'm asking. Why, why would she? Right. You said, yeah, why well, would listen she to what that? I asked. Why would a woman okay. like you described, why would a woman go through the job interview and application process? If she mm -hmm. full well knew she didn't have any intention to go to the job. Why would she do that? Okay. I, she, um, I know you want, okay, to answer your question, I uh -huh. think she, maybe some women do that. I don't, if she was No, ma'am, don't overcomplicate it. Don't overcomplicate it. I don't, I don't know why someone would do that. I, I mean, when I apply for a job and when I go somewhere, I plan to attend. That's the so whole point, ma'am. So in other words, she, I ask you, why would some, why would a woman? go apply for a job, go through the application process. She wasn't intending to go to the job. And the answer is, you wouldn't do that. Why? Because it'd be a waste of time. Yes. I mean, yeah, see, so what we need point. to get back to, people, is simple answers. You ladies are so used to talking and trying to baffle men with the BS that you can't even be direct. Please forgive me. That, that wasn't my, I'm just saying the women in general, ma'am. I didn't say you in particular. But what I'm saying mm -hmm. is everything you were saying, maybe she's this, maybe she's that, maybe she's this, then that woman does not need to be out on a dating market. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I typically agree with that. I don't think a woman should go out with a man if she has no intention of... You typically, uh, agree, with it? You typically agree with it? You typically? I don't think... I don't think a woman should go. I, I don't think a woman should go. I don't think anyone should do anything if they don't have pure or good intentions. They have bad faith 
or bad intentions. I don't think a person should then why would you come that. in making then why would you come in making possibilities for women to have bad behavior? I don't make excuses for women. Yes, I don't you make did, ma'am. Maybe you don't. Maybe you guys don't recognize that. But when women like yourself mm. come in and you start offering up possible reasons why the women do stuff, mm -hmm. and you know it's wrong, you guys just mm. don't call it wrong. You just try to explain mm -hmm. it away like there's a reason, ma'am. There's always I, a reason why what we do, what we do. I I just think that sometimes people. They need to, everyone isn't as aware of themselves as they sh they could possibly be. I know you talk about where they think they are, may not be where they actually are. So I don't think it's always bad. Ma'am, we're they talking about what percentage of the, what percentage of the dating population do you think are just confused and don't know where they are? Of all the women out there, of mm -hmm. the women who are dating and mating age, what percentage of women are you talking about? Just guess. Of, uh, uh, Dating and mating age, people who I think um, are dating of the women on the dating market or, of the one the the the, 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 one, the mindset you're talking about. What percentage of the pop, mm, female population? Is that? I, I think a very small percentage of the population. What is that? What is that? What is it? Uh, maybe be, okay. Um, maybe people to people who are the number, just the number, just the number. No need, no, 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 no more okay, words. I want to make sure I understand the question. Sorry. Um, Ma'am, you just okay. said people. Okay, oh, yes, God. please. Clarify. Sorry, I just I think maybe stop. People are unaware. Stop. Maybe stop. 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 Okay. Take a breath. Okay. okay. <laughs> I just said you just said that you don't think that people maybe people aren't where they think they are and okay. That's just like we talk. That's just like we talk about people who are overweight and obese. And we start mm. talking about people who have thyroid conditions. I ask mm. what percentage of the people who are overweight or obese have thyroid and people say less mm. than 5%. I'm asking the thing you're willing to take time to talk about what percentage of the women is that? I, I think there is a, a high percentage of women who are oh, unaware Jesus of themselves, Christ. but I don't, but I don't, excuse the conduct. Ma'am, I don't I care think... about the excusing, ma'am. You just said I think it's a okay. small percentage, then it's a high percentage. Well, when you clarify the question, I just, the way I understand This is what I need you guys to understand, different. man. This is, this is, and you're how old again? I'm 40. Do you remember your grandmother? Or, or your great-grandmother? Yes. Did you grow up around them? Yes. When your grandparents were this age, were they as indecisive sounding as you are? Well, I don't think I sound indecisive, but they were yes, very Yes, you really do, ma'am. Okay. I because what I, you're doing, I, what you're doing is you're trying to explain or, or give a reason why women may do the wrong thing in dating. And then then you're trying to justify, well, reason why they did the wrong thing is because they not may not be aware why they're doing the wrong thing. And I'm calling bullshit to all of it. And I'm saying, even if it did exist, what percentage of the population is out here unaware that they're really not ready to date because they haven't healed yet or whatever? What percentage of the population is out here moving like, well, I thought I was ready to date, but when I went out, I really wasn't over. What percentage of the population? Um, and, you, and you say it's a large percentage or a small percentage. Which one? Large, small. I, I just think... Large, small. Large, small. Large, small. I think there's a, I don't want to large, call it small, mass, but I think large, small, large, small. I think, I think there are more people. Large, who, small, I, large, okay. small, <laughs> large, small. Okay. I, 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 I don't know if I had to answer that question. I think large, large, you put it out here, ma'am. You put it out okay, here. You take my time, you've taken my audience, and now I'm to the point to where I have to be this direct with you. I didn't put this on the table. Sorry. I was going with you, but now you're going to have to stand on what you said. Is it a large percentage, yes. more than 50%, or is it less than 50% of the women? I, I think there are more than 50%, less than 50%. No other words needed. No, I think, no, 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 no hot sauce, no more or less. 
um, probably. See, see what I'm see what I'm showing you guys. I've given clear parameters, and she refuses to go with what I'm asking. It's always going to be what because the fuck I, they want to do. I said large I or small, and you keep on adding around. I said more or less, and you still. I said no other words needed. All you have to do is follow the answers, comply. But the, the order sixty six. Execute the order sixty six. Why? I don't with want a to simple mis request. I don't want to misrepresent. I don't want to misrepresent the you, answer. I think then, ma'am. Now I'm going to get upset. I, I, don't give I me don't this bullshit about you don't want to misrepresent what you said. And yes. this is another problem. They want to. They don't want to hold women accountable for shit. And we're not. I didn't ask you if you talk about Brenda, Keisha, Moquita, L Linda, Karen. We're talking about women in general, and you still don't want to, ma'am. Large, small, fifty percent, fifty percent or more, fifty percent or less. Which one is it? Because I'm really about to. I don't, uh, the, the ma'am, you're going to have to go. Then you're going to have to go. Then if you're not, no, you're not going to. If you're going to answer the question, oh. I'm going to move on. More than fifty percent, less than fifty percent. That's the only question that's out there. Okay, I'll go with less than fifty percent. How much less? I don't. Uh, maybe forty percent. Ma'am, the problem, the reason why we're where we are right now, is because you uh, you brought this case out here. You said, well. I don't think that uh, a lot of people uh, may be as aware as they are. Mm -hmm. All right. And I'm saying, okay, then of the dating female public, what percentage of the population? Because you made a smaller case. And I'm saying what percentage? And you have spent the last three minutes avoiding answering what you're talking about. Yes. Be, well, that's only the only reason I did that. Then why are you talking about it? No, no, I don't want to know I, why. I want to know why you're talking about something that you can't quantify. Even in, in, in I don't need I don't need numbers that are verified by NASA. I don't need okay. particular. I don't need. Uh, no, 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 ma'am. This is important. Okay. I don't need numbers that you're going to present to Congress. I just need to know: Are you talking about a minority or a majority? Okay. And you, so, we have spent the better part of five minutes of you dancing around this. Okay, so I've answered your question. So no, you really haven't, ma'am. You've answered. No, you I haven't. No, no, you haven't. The question I asked you was what percentage of the women I've had to I've had to make it almost at the first grade level to even move the conversation. You have not answered my question. I thought I just answered it by saying forty percent, but no, I that's not my that was not my I, original question. I asked you what was okay, the, what percentage of female. I'd say what percentage of female dating population. Would you think is moving around out here like that? And I'm but, doing this for a reason, audience. I'm doing this for a reason. Uh -huh. I want you to understand, audience. I'm doing this for a reason. I, the the only reason I say that is because what percentage do I think of women are are not necessarily in a position? I don't date women, so I don't know. But women who are not in a position to 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 date in a healthy space, I think it's a large percentage of women who are not able to dealt. De uh, to date in a healthy space, but in terms of what percentage of people do I think are, um, you know, intentionally doing things that, that you know, they I, want to, I want the audience to understand that women in general, our women in particular, would rather fucking waste time talking about a tangential point that has really nothing to do with the bulk of what we're talking about. This happens every day on YouTube. Every day. If there are men and women in a space, you are guaranteed to have at least one disruptive agent who will sit there and discuss Fringe shit. Anytime you see a panel with men and women, you are almost guaranteed to have one woman who will sit there. Well, I don't know. Well, where'd you get that fact from? Well, where this? Well, where, I don't can't verify. Their position is to to not move the conversation one bit. It's to keep it fucking stuck. Remember, she brought this point up. She said, "Well, hey." Maybe there are women like this. Maybe there are women like that. I'm like, okay, well, all right, cool. Maybe they are. 
But but a hundred percent of the single women out there, what percentage of women we're talking about? And what she didn't want to say is what we all know, probably less than two percent. Probably less than two percent. But let's just even say it was five percent. That means ninety five percent of the women, even if it was ten percent, it's still insignificant. We spent five freaking minutes talking about something that does not make a difference. And you know why this is so important? Because this is Generation X. This is the breakdown in, the, in, in our relationships. This is the result Execute of... Execute Order 66. We're supposed to be married to and dealing with. But how do you expect us to deal with anybody you can't even agree? You can't even compromise. You can't even comply to a simple fucking question. We're supposed to be the next ones up after the baby boomers go. That's our role. We're supposed to be teaching the, the younger ones coming up. And these are the women? Won't hold them accountable. Won't hold them responsible. Don't want to overspeak. Don't want to generalize. Don't want to say anything to possibly offend. Well, then why the hell are you here? I want you guys to understand that for men over 40, these are the women we were tasked with marrying and moving the culture and the community forward. So when my critics and detractors say, well, how can he give advice? Uh, He's divorced. Being divorced, this doesn't disqualify me from talking about relationship. It actually qualifies me more. I am out here in it. And whether you agree with my tactics or my tone or not, the point is, it is a a small percent. But what did I say? Women refuse to make distinctions amongst men, hold women accountable. What did I say? They refuse to make distinctions amongst men, Refuse to hold women accountable and refuse to be direct. Distinction amongst men. Hold women accountable. Be direct. How do you build anything with women who do this? How? We're supposed to lead something? Well, it depends on what the definition of is is. It depends on what this means. It depends on that means. Well, it could be. could be. Well, you know, I know one person who one time who had three toes and her three toes kind of threw her off balance. And the thing that threw her off balance made sure that one leg was shorter than the other. She walked with a limp. Because she walked with a limp, it made her back hurt because she had her back hurt and her head hurt. And when her head was hurting, she couldn't always have a clear thought. So her thoughts were always jumbled because those three toes. And that really impacted her decision making on, on, on relationships and shit. So if she had five toes, she might have had better posture and thus not had so many headaches and migraines, it might have been a better ass wife or some shut the French toast up. Yeah, if you're gonna try to troll, you should do better than that. You can't do that. You can't really troll me. I'm too good for you. See, I see you trolls coming a mile away. Do, 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 do. So, no, man, we're, we're done. There's no, there's nothing else for us to talk about. I don't, and I don't want to be mean to you. Um, I really don't. I'm going to ask you to leave. You can go ahead and do that. Thank you. So my question to the ladies, I've asked this on, on, on Instagram. How is feminism, you're free. You, you have reproductive choice. You have right to vote. 
You can go. You can do whatever you want. That being said, do you want to be with a man and make babies and live a, and live a, a, a life that what you have somebody to charter your life with? Black women in particular, listen to me. Listen, well, I'm not your enemy. High value man ain't your problem. Feminism is your problem. And until you guys recognize, wrestle with the fact that you were used for someone else's benefit and come back to the table and sit down and talk to the men because we're your only men. You won't be able to take advantage of what's coming, what's next. Um, and what's coming next? Here's what's coming next. Here's what's coming next. The great resignation is what I'm talking about uh, Wednesday. How women across the country, 22 million jobs will quit in two months. And I'm ta- I am seeing more non-black women with that, who have quit their jobs and they're working either for their man, their husband, or with their boyfriend and smiling. I want black women to really understand where you're going. The reason why the great resignation is happening and you are going to be overrepresented in the workforce, what's coming down the line, you may get a token raise. They may offer you five, six percent more, maybe even a 10 percent raise. And it ain't because they think you're special. It's because you're all that's left. But especially if you're in California, Chicago, Miami, New York City, the inflation is up year over year. Ladies, understand something. If you're not getting at least a 7% raise, you're losing money every year. It used to be 3%. What are you guys going to do? I need to get on. Hello? Uh, Hi, how are you? Melina? Melanie? Yeah. Hi, how are you? Hi, Ken. How old are you? Okay. Uh, what? Okay, what do you got for me? Okay. And why is that? Are you married or are you single? Okay, go ahead. Well, yeah, of course. There you go, you thirsty mother suckers. They're like, black and Greek, there you go. She ain't yours. Go ahead. Any kids? Does he watch my program? Okay, and refresh our memory. How old again? Okay, so you've been with your husband pretty much your adult life. Okay, well, go ahead. I mean, I'm I'm with it. And let me make an announcement. Let me say something real quick. Hold on. Let me say something real quick. And guys, you need to understand something. When you're with somebody, uh, I, I see it. She's 27 years old. Married, her husband's and he's a high value man making well in the six figures. She's saying she was in her culture, she was pretty much raised to be a wife, and they've been together eight years. Yeah, no, so that's what I'm, I'm, re- I'm refreshing the audience because the audio was off. But oh, when you, when, 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 that's okay, I, I'll let you know when to come in. But when you're with somebody early on and it tends to not be a toxic situation, you will always end up. My ex wife, shout out to my ex. You know, she's married again, but we're still cool people because we knew each other from when we were little. Look, man, we are not adversarial. Black people, we are not broken. We just got to decide to make relationship the number one priority over these goddamn jobs. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Well, see, I'm I'm half black, too. Well, 
I mean, I, I get it, you know, like I know seeing, but my mom, she is black, but she submitted to my dad, you know. Is your father black or is your mother black? My mom is black. She's a black woman, but she okay. submitted, mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, and that's, you don't really see that. Like, I don't know, like even uh, two of my, my aunts, you know, her sister. That's what I was going to ask. Sister. What about your aunts? Yeah, yeah, no, my, her her sister. Like I said, I, I am still half white, so you know. Okay, did but, did uh, your hold on? I need I want to ask a question. Did your aunt are your aunts married? No. Okay, have your aunts had relationships in your lifetime? Yes. Have they been with black men? Yes. Did did they submit to those black men? No. Did they date non-black men? Yes. Did they? How did they? Did they submit to those men? No, I it, like it. Literally, they like the way that my mom acts versus her sisters is so different. Where's your mother in the birth order? She is the youngest, so she got to see everyone and how it went. You know. Okay. All right. Well, that okay. So. Um, what would you like the audience to know? Because your aunt, see, it's it's not uncommon for one, one when there are multiple daughters, it's not uncommon for one, especially in our community, to get it and the other ones don't. But they were all taught the same things. Well, it's it's all of them, though. It's all of them. Like, my mom is one of eight, and she's the only one that's been married 30 years. Well, so I said it's not uncommon for one oh, to yeah, get yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So... What I'm saying is, how old is your mother? She is 52. Okay. It's, so your mother is my Generation X. Yes. These Generation X women learn the same stuff baby boomer women did. Mm -hmm. Baby boomer women, who would be your grandmother's age, were taught by, would have been my grandmother's generation. Uh, right. Okay, so the baby boom women, if they chose to, they taught their daughters, but their daughter decided what to do. They taught Generation X women what to do. Your mother just followed the cheatings, and she taught it to you, and you could just, uh, that's what freedom is. You can choose to follow or not, but the other women yeah. sound like they're unmarried. But my, but my mom, she was kind of like anti-feminism a little bit, you know, because she was like, she taught me that I need it. Like, I just don't, I hear a lot of women when they think of being married, they're like, I don't want to be a slave. And it's like, it's not being a slave. It's mm -hmm. you're taking care of somebody you love. You're taking care of your family. I don't see it as being a slave. Well, but yes, I well, want my family to be happy and have a good meal. I want them to be taken care of and have clean clothes. Like, why would you not do that for someone you love? It's not well, being a slave. Hold on. Okay, okay. That's what you say. But because you were, you're in the black community, is that what is preached? No, it's definitely not. And that's why I'm saying that feminism is like in the actual definition, I am a feminist. Like I want us to be equal, but at the same time, we're not equal because like, so um, back when we, my husband and I were first together, he used to do the hard jobs, you know, like now he does good, you know, but he used to do the hard jobs, the concrete construction. He used to do a regular construction. I, there's no way I could have been in that job, you know. Are you going to have children? You have more than more children? Yes, yes. Uh, we're actually yeah. trying. Do you have a son or a daughter? We have a daughter. We would like to have a, a couple of boys, you know. How old is your daughter? She's actually, she's five, but she'll okay. be six this year. So are you training your daughter to be a wife? Yes. Um, okay. I'm teaching her how to cook. I'm teaching her how to clean. I'm telling her how to do the things, but that's how it was for me. Okay. Uh, like I was raised ironing the clothes and everything. Okay. You know? Do you have any sisters? No. Do you have any brothers? I have a brother. And what, is he married? No, he's younger. I have a younger brother. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you very yeah, much. Thank you. Awesome. Bye-bye. So guys, what I'm ultimately saying is, you know, a lot of women will say, I didn't learn this growing up. Well, if 
if you're Generation X, you saw it. Whether you learned it, you saw it. If you're over 40, you saw it. And if you're over 40, unmarried, it's because you rebelled. You chose not to do what other groups of women did. And now millennial women, unfortunately, some of you millennial women, you may have saw it if your mom's an older Gen X or an early baby boomer. A lot of millennials' parents are baby boomers too. So I take that back. If you're over 35, you saw it. So what comes next? Why is this important? Uh, ladies, hit the link. If you don't want to be on camera, all you do have to do is ask to not be on camera. Yeah, y'all was all in that lady's chesticles. That's why I moved my picture over there. That was a married woman, y'all. Come on now. She was married. Okay? Have a little to come. <laughs> come on, man. But here's something I'm going to also tell the guys. One thing I want to tell the men in general, black men in particular, work on your ability to differentiate. Just because you made the first woman that came on. I ask questions before I before you don't before you pass judgment, make sure you know what you're judging. Don't be like so many women today and refuse to make distinctions. Don't fall, because you can't talk about women refusing to make distinctions, holding women accountable, and being direct if we're doing some of the same things. That's why you have so many women in general, so many of our women in particular, they, they, I don't like his content, this, that, da, 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 and they don't watch a thing that I say. They don't watch my show, they watch clips, and clips of clips. So at the end, what it comes right down to is you, as a woman and a man or a man, you could decide who you interact with. Now, when you have a public platform like this, you kind of have to take it as a come. But in my personal life, look, man, don't if people don't agree with you. And they can't tell you why they disagree, because I'm open to hearing a different argument, but not just one based on your feelings. If you have a different argument, you have some feet, you have something to back it up on. I am open to changing my mind. I'm open to evolving, and I'll give you a case in point. Three, four years ago, maybe four or five years ago, I was really, really against state-sponsored marriage. Very much against it. Why? Well, because the family court system has evolved into being a weapon against most men. Now people say you're pro-marriage. Well, you have to understand a nuanced position. I'm pro-marriage when a man can be in a position of leadership. I've said it many times. Average men, I think marriage is a bad deal for an average guy today because of the mindset of the typical modern woman towards the average guy. See, that's a nuanced position. That's not pro-marriage. That's not anti-marriage. Just like politics. I don't get into politics, but I'm much more of an independent. Meaning you judge the situation. And I will tell you this, especially in our community, I think the men are far more willing to be independent-minded and judge women based upon the woman versus the basis the archetype this is why distinctions are so important when you deal with a critic or detractor push them to make a distinction and directly clarify what they're talking about and if it's not you cool Do, 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 do. All right, I got about another, uh, I don't know about 10 more minutes. So, anywho, uh, this has been good. Headed to Miami next week. Miami is going to be off the chain next week. Got some big, some good things happening down there. 
If you're in the Miami area, if you see your, your godfather, fist bump, elbow bump, give me a pound. That's what's up. Um, I'm going to be announcing when I get out into the, go out into cities, get out to the field. Uh, and if you are a man who verifiably has his shit together and you're looking to build a network and be of use to others and the group and you're single out here looking for your whatever situation, whether you're looking for a wife, executive wife, whatever you're looking for, when I hit the city, I'm going to have a I'm going to have an inbox, a mailbox for the guys to say that stuff because I want to start profiling more men who have their stuff together. And conversely, if you're a woman in the cities I'm going to and you got your shit together, as we talk about it over here, I would love to have these men and these women be in the same room. Because that's one way you beat all this. You let all the people who say this, they say that, the da da da. You know what beats all of it? One of the best things that, that challenges a narrative is results. When you're starting to see couples get together, black couples get together, black marriages, black families reunited, forming, kids being made, businesses being formed, uh, alliances, relationships, what do you hear from the critics and detractors? What do you, what do you hear from the critics and detractors? He gay. He gay. Look at him. He ate his mama. Da, da. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh-huh. 50, all these ready. What, what? Hmm? What were the results? And you got to get, you got to come to a point to where you even ask, if you're a critic or a detractor, what are you really against? And what it really is, most people who are against what I'm talking about are women who are against uh, hierarchical relationship. Here, men here, women here, children there. They don't want that. Especially, well, take that back, scratch, 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 scratch. With a black man right here. Because, see, there are many women who, may, who will ha be okay with that mean old patriarchy kind of stuff. As long as it's not Damien. <laughs> if it's Damien, ah, I can't have that. But if it's Daryl, cool. Uh, so go ahead. Start your video. If you don't start your video, you can't come in. I've said that before. Uh, you need to get on the camera. I can't. I can only see the your, your corner of your head. I can only see the corner. I need you to get all the way on camera. Yeah. Uh, last name K. You need to get all the way on camera, or I won't put you on. Okay. Well, bye bye. Trolls get so mad because they want to get on. <laughs> they be mad. They're like, "Ooh, I just need to." Trolls are your best marketing. Look at them. Uh, hey, chick. Let me go ahead and help you out. Let me send you a message real quick. Don't raise your hand. Don't say nothing. Do 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 do. All right, well, do, 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 do. I can show you better than I can tell you. Um, here we go. So at the end of the day, modern women have weaponized probability, possibility. I mean, excuse me, scratch, misspeak. At the end of the day, modern women have weaponized possibilities. It used to be just the possibility of sex. 
Now it's the possibility of femininity, the possibility of cooperation, the possibility of submissiveness, even the possibility of loyalty and relationship. So much so that women have become, have, have OD'd on possibility to now they become a danger to themselves. The possibility that they have weaponized against men is now destroying their outcomes. Destroying their outcomes. How else can you have women who are almost 40 years old talking about they don't want to settle while they out here freezing eggs? How else do you think you have 40 years old talking about they don't want to settle freezing eggs in people's DMs and inboxes talking about, hey, big head. Winter is coming. When winter is coming, and then you ask them about it, they get angry. Holy shit, look at that rabid hyena just ripping this guy's nuts off. And I know Shirley be mad at me. Shirley, I didn't do it. Shirley, you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. But, you know, like I always say, we're going to get around. It's going to be good. It's going to be great. Your godfather does what he does, does what he does. <laughs> why? Why, 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 why? This is a certified hood classic. Peace out.